Hello and welcome back. The goal for this video today is to help you guys make a more informed decision about which controller that you should be using at home. And there's really three components to this. The first being cost. The second being, are you the more set it and forget it type of person? Or third, if you plan on using the Omada hardware as a whole for learning purposes. And before we dive into that rabbit hole and discuss what each of those kind of mean, uh, we're gonna go through this chart to really give you guys a better idea of how these different controllers compare. And so looking at this chart, we basically have two overarching options to choose from. We have our on-site controllers and we have our cloud-based controller. Underneath the on-site controllers, we have a software controller and a dedicated hardware controller that we can choose from. And we're really gonna focus on the software controller and hardware controller for home use because I think that's what makes most sense uh, for this TP-Link Omada hardware. Uh, for us and in this video. And so we really have a couple of use cases where that might interest you when trying to decide between the software controller or hardware controller. And that's, you know, if you want to have a 100% air gapped environment, what does that mean? Well, if you could imagine your home uh, just absolutely not being connected to the internet at all. So that way your network and all your systems can't be uh, hacked or have any security vulnerabilities, at least not remote ones through the internet. And so that's one one type of use case that you might be interested in. Of course, both of these are meant to run on site, which is really beneficial for you because you can always have control of it when you're there locally. And if you do need remote access, you could of course host your own VPN, either using the Omada routers or using your own VPN virtual machine or container, whichever it may be. Now we're not really gonna touch the network scale because this really applies to businesses, but do know that the software controller and hardware controller are really geared um, towards smaller businesses, medium size maybe, and potentially even somewhat larger businesses, but not quite you know, international scale businesses. Now the number of connected devices is interesting because it's for the software controller, it's really hardware dependent on how many devices you can control because not all hardware is built the same and there's so many options, you can potentially control an unlimited number of devices. But with the hardware controllers, the OC200 and the OC300 currently, you can control between 100 to 500 devices um, with either of those controllers. And of course, if you're paying for the cloud-based controller, you should be able to have unlimited devices or one would hope anyway. Uh, all of these are cloud accessible, which is cool. And basically that means is that if you have an internet connection to your home uh, with the software controller and hardware controllers, you can control your network uh, through TP-Link's cloud software, which is really neat. Now the software controller is really cool because it can be run in a desktop environment, a container or a virtual machine. And of course the hardware controller is locked to a dedicated hardware device. And our cloud SDN is obviously running in a cloud application. Of course, the pricing for these, the software controller is free, which is awesome. You don't have to pay for updates, at least currently, which is also awesome. Wow, I can't speak. The hardware controller will only cost you the cost of the actual unit itself. Um, you also don't have to pay for any software updates currently. And then for the cloud SDN, of course, there are going to be um, fees for the number of devices that you may have or may be using. But again, that's really for businesses. So that's not something we're really gonna worry about. So now that we've got a better idea of the kind of differences between the three different types of controllers, let's talk about each of them individually in more detail. First up, we'll talk about the software controller. So this one I think is the most flexible option because uh, you have the option of running it on your own desktop at home, whether it be Mac, Windows, and some various Linux distributions. You can install it inside of a virtual machine. So if you have your own servers, you can run it on there, or maybe inside of a container instead of uh, like on a desktop application, which is also really cool. So that's what I mean by flexible, right? And it's also free, so that's a huge perk. And I think this is a really good option for people who want to learn new things at home. Let's say that you have no experience with virtual machines and you want to deploy this controller to a virtual machine so you can control your network. That's a really cool introduction or an easy way to get introduced to virtual machines. And the same can be said about containers, whether that be running through Docker or Podman and I guess Kubernetes. 
Um, so that's that's really cool. And for you guys that are like much more advanced and want to get into things like high availability and failover, you also have the option to run these. Uh, within containers and VMs, so you can explore that as well and tinker with that on your home network. And if you want remote access, you can also install a VPN within a VM or a container, or you could just use the ER605, but if you use one of the uh, routers that Amata sells, I don't think you have failover options, at least currently that I'm aware of, if that device were to die. So you'll probably want to stick to containers or virtual machines if you're learning you know, high availability and failover or whatever, whatever it may be. So this option is really cool, again, because it's the most flexible and of course, because it's free. Furthermore, if you need control of your network, you are not reliant on the internet at all. So if the internet goes out and you are at home, you can still have full control of your network and all the devices uh, that are connected to it. So that's a really big perk about having the software controller on site and not something that you'll have to really worry about if you are strictly using the cloud. Next up is the hardware controller, the dedicated piece of hardware. Uh, so this is my personal favorite and there's just something appealing about having a dedicated device that's doing a job that I really like. It may not be the best option uh, when you're comparing all these, but again, it's just something that I think is really cool is just having a dedicated device that just does a job, even if it's a singular job. And so, of course, this device does cost money. Currently, you have two options. You have the OC200 and OC300. And the software updates are free. So you get to have those continually, which is cool. If the device fails, however, you, will, you won't necessarily, your network's not gonna go down. You don't have to worry about that. But you will have to replace that device, which kind of sucks. So you don't really have the option for high availability or failover, at least currently, that I'm aware of. And so that's one side or like, I guess, downgrade from the software controller and something you maybe want to be worried about. But on the plus side, you can export your configuration and import that into a new uh, controller that you have purchased. So that way you don't have to worry about actually losing your configuration at all. And uh, this, this particular option, the hardware controllers, I think that's really for people that just want to set it and forget it or maybe people who don't have a home lab they just have like a small little stack of network components and they don't really want to have these like huge towers or well technically i guess you could run them on raspberry pis but that's besides the point they you just want something dedicated that you want to buy from the manufacturer it's low powered you don't really have to think about it it's like it's just there once you get it set up you can pretty much forget about it and i think that's what the hardware controller is uh, like one big perk of the hardware controllers is. And finally, we have our cloud-based controller. So I think this is the worst option for home lab use or home users. Although if you have failover internet, so that is like if your ISP goes down and you have a second ISP, this would be pretty cool because you will always have 100%, um, I guess, uptime or connectivity to your home from the cloud. The only downside is, of course, if there's a regional outage, and you know that all of the providers' internets are down, well then you can't control your network because you don't have an on-premise device. But that's generally not a big deal because it probably rarely happens. And most people tend to use over the air, uh, like LTE ISPs for their uh, failover device or failover internet connection. And those two, uh, usually one fails and the other one is up. There's, they're, they're very, very rarely both down unless there's like a national emergency or a statewide emergency. But again, uh, I don't think the cloud-based controller is really targeted for home use. So we're gonna kind of gloss over this one. And so in conclusion, I, I, think, I think you guys have enough information now to decide which way you wanna go, whether it's gonna be the 100% software controller or if it's gonna be the dedicated hardware controller. I'd really like to know which options you guys chose or will choose and um, in the comments. So just, just let me know, cause I'm just curious. And so with all that being said, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching and I will see you all next time. Peace.